Hello everyone, this is FaZe Joey Fury. I am a competitive Tekken player from the United States. Most recently, I participated in the Tekken World Tour for 2023. My best results on the tour were getting first place at Clash of the Olympians in Greece, fifth place at Combo Breaker in Illinois, and I finished ninth place at the Global Finals in New Orleans. And that was, of course, for Tekken 7, so now I'm very excited to get started learning this brand new Tekken with all of you. I do stream on Twitch at Joey underscore Fury, and you can find me on Twitter as well at Joey underscore Fury. Let's get to it, but before we start, be sure to subscribe to Dash Fight for more character guides, and check out their website for all things FGC. So today we are talking about Paul Phoenix, the all-American brawler and judo master, a character that is very dear to my heart. Paul has always been notorious for his huge damage and threatening 50-50s, and in this game, he is living up to that reputation more than ever. Paul appears to be quite flexible with his game plan in Tekken 8. He can take a defensive or an offensive approach, but the important thing, in my opinion, is seeing how his punishers act as natural transitions to strong mix-ups and to strong 50-50s, and we're going to talk about that in more detail. So his punishment is very strong. He still has his signature back 1-2, 12th frame punish, only now in this game it knocks down. So once the opponent is knocked down, there is an opportunity to move in and begin those threatening mix-ups that I was mentioning. And the same thing is going to apply to his signature Death Fist with Punisher. If you land this, it's a Heat Engager. So Paul's going to get a whole bunch of plus frames and a big opportunity to run in and force a 50-50. And additionally, Paul has a great new whiff punisher in Forward 2. This is also a heat engager. Once Paul has heat activated, it gives him the opportunity to threaten the strong 50-50 between Heat Death Fist and Heat Smash Demo Man. We're going to talk about these tools in more detail as well. And lastly, Paul has very strong command grab options, which we'll go into along with some very threatening counter hit buttons like quarter circle back four, down forward four, and his very strong down forward two. So for these reasons, Paul appears to be a very well-rounded character in Tekken 8. So let's talk about Paul's pokes. Just quick, safe attacks that don't carry a ton of risk. Some of my favorites are going to be Paul's down one, 14 frame mid, uh, his down forward one, also a 14 frame mid, that can go into backsway. Just three by itself, standing three. This move has excellent range. Down back three, I know I mentioned, you know, with poking we want to be safe. Unfortunately, down back three is launch punishable on block, but I think it does have value as just a quick high crush, quick little low tap. It's also got quarter circle forward three. This move gets excellent rewards on counter hits. It has amazing range and tracking. Great low check there. Also keeping it very basic, he's just got his jab and his 1-2. Very essential pokes. And last few, he's got while standing 4, which can be executed as quarter circle forward 4. Great quick approach with an 11 frame mid. Does good damage. Plus 5 on hit. And lastly, one of the ones I'm very excited about is this new while standing 1-2. So you go into crouch, release, press 1, 2. It can also be done out of crouch dash as down, down, forward, then release, down, forward, 1, 2. So this move actually does not count, uh, doesn't combo a normal hit, but it will chain together if the first one lands counter hit. And then just a very interesting thing I want to mention, if only the second hit counter hits, it becomes plus 15, and you get a guaranteed back sway, too. So those are some of Paul's best pokes. So as far as mix-ups and okizemi, I think they kind of go hand in hand with Paul. If you have an oki situation, you generally just want to enforce a 50-50 with Paul. So as far as doing that, I like to keep it simple with a few options. Uh, with mids, I really like forward 1 plus 2, uh, because if it does get blocked, it retains plus frames on block. I like quarter circle back 2, this is also safe on block and a heat engager, so very strong. And lastly, I'm a fan of quarter circle forward 3 plus 4, which does a grip of damage. We'll talk about that combo a bit later. And then as far as lows, I like quarter circle forward 3. I like sidestep 3. I like back 4. And of course, the mighty demo man down 4 to 1 plus 2. 
far as developing pressure and plus on block buttons, as I mentioned, I really like forward one plus two. This is going to force crouch for the opponent and leave Paul at plus three. You can also generate pressure uh, with down forward one into backsway, which I mentioned earlier, and while standing one two into backsway. He also has some light plus frames off of his counter hit tool, quarter circle back four. He can get plus one there, generates a little bit of pressure. Jab becomes a frame trap. And there is a new addition that can get some pressure started, which is his up forward two. It's going to get right in their face at plus five. Um, it is linear and it is a high, but it's pretty fast and it just forces this situation right up close, which can be advantageous for Paul. Let's talk about punishers. At minus 10 and minus 11, Paul will just take the basic one, two. Also worth mentioning, if the opponent is low enough on life that it will kill, 1-2-3 is all a combo. Just not recommended to use normally because it is unsafe on hit. Minus 12 and minus 13, Paul can then get his powerful back 1-2 punish. It's a high mid-string, knocks down, leads to mix-ups, and it's a wall splat as well. Paul can also utilize down 1 plus 2 as his 12 frame and 13 frame punish. This does a little less damage than back 1-2, but it is necessary in some instances because it's mid and it has a little bit more range than back 1-2. At 14 frames, Paul will get back 3, full launcher, but its range is limited, so Paul players have to be diligent determining when this punish will reach and when it will not. If you're unsure about range, Paul has the new forward 2 14 frame punish, which has much better range. At 15 frames, Paul can do down forward 2 and up forward 4 to punish. The range on these can sometimes be a little limited as well, so you can continue to use forward 2 in some instances at minus 15. Paul can also perform a frame perfect quarter circle forward 2 at minus 15, but I would only recommend using quarter circle forward 2 starting at negative 17 and onward. From Crouch, Paul's block punishment is extremely simple and effective. You're going to do while standing 4 for minus 11 and minus 12 moves. You're going to do while standing 3, 2 for minus 13 and minus 14 moves. And everything minus 15 and worse, you will just do while standing 2. Let's talk about heat moves. Some of Paul's best neutral tools are also heat engagers. So this includes quarter circle back 2, great safe on block mid, Good range, good damage, and will activate heat for a forced mix-up. You can kind of think of this like a mini safe version of Death Fist. He also has forward four, safe mid homing move, meaning it catches sidestep and sidewalk. And he's also got the Death Fist whiff punisher. Always a good idea to have this locked and loaded in case the opponent commits a major error by whiffing. And now once heat is activated, Paul's going to get access to a powered up version of Death Fist that is much safer on block. And you can see there it also wall splats from very far away. And secondly, he's going to get access to a buffed version of Demo Man. You're going to press 2 plus 3. It's going to burn his whole heat gauge, but you see there devastating low strike, 45 damage. It's only minus 12 on block and it cannot be low parried. So you can immediately start getting the idea of what I mean by forced mix-up here. Connect a heat engager, you can threaten the normal demo man, which is very strong, down 4, 2, 1 plus 2. You can threaten the powered up death fist as the mid check. Or if you want to keep it a bit safer, you could burn your heat right away and do the heat smash demo man. Very, very strong stuff. Lastly, without getting into combos, I'm just going to give you a rundown of good combo starters real quick. So we have down forward 2, up forward 3, 4, quarter circle forward 1, counter hit down forward 4, quarter circle forward 3 plus 4, which is actually a full combo starter on counter hit, counter hit quarter circle back 3, 2, 1, Counter hit, quarter circle back 4. Quarter circle back 1 plus 2. While standing 2. Counter hit, quarter circle forward 3. And counter hit, sidestep 3. So we touched on this a little bit, but what do you need to do to start your offense and pressure as Paul? 
So in my opinion, you want to develop your defensive instincts so you can sense when your opponent is about to overextend and whiff an attack. And at that point, you can capitalize with an option like back one, two, or forward two, or of course, quarter circle forward two, death fist. You want to have strong game knowledge of what can be punished on block by these attacks as well. Once landed, you can plan your 50-50 from there. For instance, do you want to opt for a lower risk mid versus low mix-up? You can run in and go for back 4, which is only minus 12 on block. Or you could run in and go for forward 1 plus 2. Or do you want to go for more of a go big or go home kind of mix-up? As I mentioned, you can come in off the heat engager and go for demo man. Or you can just go for your heat death fist. Lastly, you can also use these offensive openings from this back 1-2 knockdown, for instance, or from a heat engager to establish Paul's throw game. He has a very strong grapple game. So some of these strong throws include up forward 1 plus 2, 2 plus 4, and then immediately hold back, and also back 1 plus 4, the foot launch. So now on the other end of the spectrum, the question is, how do you defend with this character? Does Paul have good tools for defending? Does he have good panic buttons? So the first thing we really want to keep in mind when it comes to panic buttons. Panic buttons are for capitalizing on your best defensive reads as a player. They are not a substitute in themselves for having sound defense. Blocking and punishing, sidestepping and punishing, scoring low parries, and reading patterns should be your main focus and your first line of defense before you start getting into utilizing panic buttons. So this term panic button is a little bit of a loaded phrase, but usually just what we mean by this is some kind of attack that you can utilize while you're being pressured by the opponent that may allow you to escape that pressure. And they're usually quite unsafe if unsuccessful. So let's talk about what some of those are. If placed well, they can be quite rewarding. I advise getting comfortable with Paul's up forward 3-4 to counter players who are doing a lot of low attacks. He also has the mid power crush down back 1 plus 2, which does solid damage, and you can get a guaranteed dash down 1 plus 2 after. He also has the very risky forward 1 plus 4, which allows him to rapidly ship, shift to the left and escape pressure. It's not particularly rewarding, however, and it is a minus 14 on block, so you want to be careful with that one. He also has back forward one, a backswing attack that he can escape pressure with. Um, it is a high, and he gets a guaranteed death fist if it is successful. And lastly, Paul retains his back one plus three and back two plus four judo reversal. This can beat certain high and mid attacks when well timed. Just be careful, it only works against normal punches and kicks. It will lose badly to throws, knees, elbows, and it is ineffective against heat smashes and other power attacks. So the fun part, let's talk about some bread and butter combos. So there are elaborate and high execution combos that exist with Paul. We're gonna keep it simple. Our formula is going to be launcher, filler, tornado spin, and combo ender. So let's start with a simple one. Our launcher is going to be down forward two. Our filler is going to be down forward four and then three two. Our tornado spin is going to be back one two. And our ender is going to be dash in down four two one plus two. So let's see launch, filler, tornado spin, ender. So we just saw that off down forward two. Let's also see that off of up forward four. Filler, tornado, ender. So let's show a couple more useful ones. Let's do up forward three, four, three, two, back one, two, dash, demo man. Another important one we're gonna do while standing two, three, two, three, two, back sway one plus two, dash, demo man. You can also do that same route off of back three, three, two, three, two, back one plus two, dash, demo man. And let's talk about some useful counter hit combos. We're gonna look at counter hit quarter circle back four, quarter circle forward one, three, two, back one, two, dash, demo man. Also, a useful one counter hit quarter circle forward three. We just go straight into demo man. Also, wanna take a look at 
simple combos. They're not actually off the launchers, but they just chain together as links. We have counter hit sidestep three, goes right into down one plus two. We also have counter hit down forward four, which chains right into back one two, and also chains right into forward two. And lastly, a great one to know is quarter circle forward three plus four into quarter circle forward two. Now let's just take a look at a high damage combo that uses heat to squeeze out some extra damage. For wall combos, Paul's most basic and flexible wall combo is going to be 3-2 backsway 2. Looks like that. If you get a wall splat and you have not used your tornado spin yet, I recommend using down back 2 for the tornado spin. And if you're looking for something high damage and high execution, it is possible for the wall combo to do 3-2 backsway tap up and then quarter circle forward 2. It looks something like this. Just keep in mind when it comes to that low hitting unscaled death fist ender that we just saw there are variations that exist that allow you to hit that on all the characters in the cast but as far as this particular one with the three two backsway death fist should really only be done against medium and large size characters so some final thoughts what is paul good at paul is good at punishing opponent mistakes and channeling that into momentum that forces strong 50 50s the opponent having to confront Heat Death Fist is a scary situation, no matter what. So getting good at placing that and then optimizing combo damage is essential. Paul is great at whiff punishing, block punishing, fishing for counter hits, testing the opponent's throw defense, and doing huge damage. As far as what Paul is bad at, his panic buttons are limited, and the ones he has available are generally quite risky. Uh, his lows are still either slow to start up or quite punishable though his back 4 is slightly improved in Tekken 8. While his 50-50s are terrifying and his damage potential is huge, he generally requires very good defensive instincts to get started and find his initial openings. Overall, Paul appears to be very strong in Tekken 8. I think he appears improved over his Tekken 7 Season 4 version. His buffs appear to outnumber his nerfs in my opinion. How he will stack up relative to the rest of the cast, that remains to be seen, but at the moment he seems like a very strong choice for learning the game and starting the climb to the top. Good luck. And just so you know, you can check out all the things shown in this video in the text version via the link in the description. That's all from me. Once again, I am FaZe Joey Fury. Thanks so much for joining me. If you like this video, please leave a like or a comment below with your thoughts. Thanks for watching.